of the United Mexican States, Mr. Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador. With him, His Excellency Joseph Biden Jr., President of the United States of America, and His Excellency Mr. Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada. And we also have their respective delegations, representatives of the media, and people following us through internet, through the social media. Let's welcome. to Presidents and Prime Minister. Joseph Biden, Jr., President of the United States of America. You have the floor, sir. Thank you very much. President, for hosting the Prime Minister and me for the 10th North American Leaders Summit. This is a magnificent forum. And uh, we're true partners the three of us, working together with mutual respect and a genuine like for one another to advance a safer and more prosperous future for all of our people. And uh, the reason for this summit, this trilateral relationship, they are so impactful is because we share a common vision for the future grounded on common values. And I mean that sincerely, common values we share in our countries. Since becoming president, I've been laser focused on rebuilding the U.S. economy from the bottom up and the middle out, not the trickle down economy. From the bottom up and the, and the middle out, it works because the wealthy do very well and everybody else does well too, but everybody does well. And uh, from the bottom up is means investing in priorities for working families. The United States has made historic bipartisan investments in infrastructure and innovation that are already beginning to deliver concrete benefits to the American people, and I would argue it will ultimately reap benefits for the entire North America. We've renewed our dependence our deepen, and deepened our cooperation uh, for uh, our closest friends and allies, none closer than Mexico and Canada to take on the biggest challenges facing the region and, quite frankly, the world. Because there can no longer be any question, none, in today's interconnected world. We cannot wall ourselves off from shared problems. We are stronger and better when we work together, the three of us. And together, we've made enormous progress since our last summit, from COVID, fighting COVID-19 and strengthening our ability to address public health threats to investing in and building a 21st century workforce. The top of our shared agenda today is keeping the North America the most competitive, prosperous, and resilient economic region of the world. And the strength of our economic relationship among our nations not only supports good-paying jobs in all of our countries, but it generates tremendous growth. Now we're working to a future to strengthen our cooperation on supply chains and critical minerals so we can continue accelerating our efforts to build the technologies of tomorrow right here in North America. This summit, this summit also builds on the continual consultation and cooperation with one another to take on the challenges that impact all three of our nations. Our entire hemisphere is experiencing unprecedented levels of migration, greater than any time in history. It is, uh, we have painted this line that it is very clear it, uh, is one thing and the authority is a different thing. There is no criminal association or partnership as before. Yes, uh, this is, uh, we're even ashamed to mention this, uh, uh, that uh, to mention that those who were in charge of guaranteeing or ensuring public security were at the service, in the past, were at the service of criminal organizations. This doesn't happen in Mexico anymore. That's why in this meeting, this summit, we just held today, all three governments of the three countries, we have reached agreements to continue working together 
to get peace, to have peace in all three countries so that we can ensure and guarantee security of our peoples. That's all I wanted to answer to your question, madam. Yes, we are doing that. Just as I was telling you that in the case of migration, first, there were brothers and sisters from Central America and also from Mexico, but now in recent times, a lot of migrants from Venezuela, from Nicaragua, Colombia, Ecuador, We do have a situation. This is a, uh, uh, these are changes in places. Where we're, uh, the places where people being pushed or are being pushed to leave their towns, their place of origin for many reasons. And with drugs, we have a uh, case in point. Is not cannabis, it's not marijuana, it's not poppies, poppy, it's uh, not only cocaine either. Now we have fentanyl and uh, chemicals, which are uh, some of the uh, most dangerous type of substance and very harmful for people because uh, because they are causing so many deaths. So then, we're working on this in a, uh, an organized manner. In the case of Mexico, this uh, led us to uh, make all the ports and the customs offices to, uh, to be controlled by the armed forces in Mexico. All the sea customs office, because fent fentanyl and other chemicals come from Asia, and they are processed in labs, and we are uh, avoiding the entrance of those uh, chemical substances, and we are destroying labs. The Navy Secretariat is in charge of uh, managing ports and customs, sea customs offices. For instance, we had so much trafficking of chemicals in the port of Manzanillo and also in Lazaro Cárdenas. Now the Navy is in charge of controlling those customs. And all the customs, the land customs offices along the borderline are now under the responsibility of the Ministry of Defense, National Defense Ministry. So we are combating fentanyl and those chemicals. And we are doing this because We care. Nothing human is alien to us. We truly care being able to help and to be of help. The situation in the United States, deaths because of overdose of fentanyl. And, uh, but just as we discussed today, this is not uh, only an issue of the United States. The thing is that if we do not face this problem, this uh, scourge, we are going to suffer it ourselves as well. So we have to act in a coordinated fashion, and that is something we've been doing, and we discussed it in this summit. It is in the communique we are about to give you. and. Uh, we are defending life, 
the life. As I was telling you, I was, I was telling uh, Prime Minister Trudeau and President Biden uh, their uh, teams, I was telling them as well, we only have two campaigns. Uh, publicity or propaganda campaigns in the government, in my administration, one is dedicated or devoted to not consuming drugs, say no to drugs, because we have to also think of that. Um, it became uh, quite a famous thing, public uh, fame. Everything related to uh, gangs. There are even series of gangs and organized crime, gangs of organized crimes. And this is like an apology of uh, what that which is desirable because uh, there are residences, very rich homes in those series very luxurious homes uh, and the cars. Uh, men and women, all very good looking, very handsome men and women, well dressed with uh, jewelry all over the place, with a lot of power. And they pick up the phone and they call uh, the head of the police force, uh, head of the military, or even a president of a country. And that's what's being uh, disseminated all over. But we have seen a, a series on the damage caused by fentanyl, how in six months the life of a young person is destroyed, and what uh, those doses contain. They have muriatic acid. Uh, do people inform about the situation? Do people let other people know about this? No, of course not. So we are going to be launching an information campaign. As I was telling uh, the president and the prime minister, I said, the papers, yes, uh, they say, well, they're not bad. I mean, they just they have five substances. That's it. But they're not bad. We did some uh, research on this. Over 30 substances, harmful and cancer-causing substances in those devices people smoke with. Uh, however, uh, because of the lobbying, corruption as well, the publicity or advertising management, then uh, this is being allowed. And there are many parents and mothers, fathers, who don't even know the damage that uh, there are children are going through because of the vapors. We have to look into this, but really, this is not only the responsibility of the government, this is also the responsibility of the media. You can also help us so much on this to you know, spread the word to inform people. Uh, radio stations, television networks, you, they should be devoting time for this to inform people, to guide people on this, on how bad drugs can be for people's health. And that people can be successful and they can be happy without having, without needing to fall into drug addiction, those mortal uh, traps. Well, all this, that's what we've been discussing. I think I'm taking more than the time that I should have taken. It's cold outside. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes.